In this video, I want to work through a progression of finding the vertex of a quadratic. I want to start with some basic problems that are in vertex form and then slowly work our way up to completing the square to rewrite the equation from a standard form to vertex form so we can identify the vertex. But it's very important to understand if we want everything to be in vertex form and if vertex form is how we find the vertex, then what is vertex form? So vertex form of a quadratic is a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And just remember what we're trying to find is basically either the max or the min of a quadratic. Okay, so if we have like a nice little parabola, here's an upside down one, you can see it has a max point right here. That is what we call the vertex. And that vertex is going to be in the form of h comma k. Now we're not going to be working with graphs. But what I want to do is help you identify how you can find that point when you're given an equation. So let's go ahead and work on an example here. And what if I have a function here, f of x, and this one's going to be a x squared minus two, right? So what is the vertex in this case? So just remember the vertex um, is going to be your h represents your y or your x coordinate, I'm sorry, and k represents the, uh, the y coordinate, right? So these are going to be your transformations of your graph, right? Because typically if we look at a quadratic graph, you're going to have your vertex is going to be at zero, zero, right? And it's going to open up. Okay, so in this case, you can see my vertex is at zero comma zero or the origin. So what's happening with H and K is that's going to be shifting my graph left or right or up or down. So it's important to recognize which transformation is which. Well, when you have a transformation inside of your parentheses or inside of your function, that's going to be a horizontal shift. And when you have this transformation of this adding K outside of the function, that is going to be your vertical shift. So you can see in this case that this is a vertical shift down two units or also that my K is equal to a negative two. So the vertex in this example is just going to be a zero because I didn't do anything horizontally, comma, a negative two. Now, what about if we do something on the inside? So for instance, what if I had an F of X is equal to a X minus two quantity squared, right? So obviously, you know, that's not the same transformation, right? The negative two shifted the graph down to units. That's what was my K. Now, a lot of students will say, oh, H is negative two, right? So therefore this vertex is negative two comma zero. Uh, 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 don't do that. Okay. So what's really, really important about this is, is to understand we have to write it in this format. So what I can do is I can rewrite this using parentheses. I can rewrite this as X minus a negative two or X minus, yeah, negative two, because what's X minus negative two? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Why am I doing that? That's for the plus ones. Why am I doing it like that? What you want to do is rewrite it like this X minus a two, right? But notice when I put these in parentheses, Notice how my two is actually positive, right? It's X minus two. We're looking for our X minus H. We're looking for what H is, right? So you can see this is X minus two. So H is actually equal to a two. So my vertex in this case is going to be a two. And that's a really bad two comma zero. Why is it zero in this case? Because again, I'm not adding or subtracting anything outside of the function. So again, just as a quick review, let's just kind of do one now where we're going to have both of them in the same set. So in this case, I could have a X plus one quantity squared, and then we could do a plus three. Okay. So this is what I was trying to kind of explain to you in that last one, whereas you can now rewrite this. I got, if I got to write this as X minus, I'm not going to use a positive um, one in this case, because that would be, that wouldn't give me the same result. But in this case, what I need to do is rewrite this as an X minus a negative one quantity squared and then plus three. All right. And that was my point that I was trying to make, or I mistakenly made in the previous example, because minus a negative is the same thing as adding, right? So now hopefully you can see here that this vertex is actually going to be a negative one. And then we can just take K exactly as it is as a three. Okay. So what that's all that's doing is that's just shifting the graph one unit to the right and then three units up. So that is going to be your new vertex. Now, these are all fine and dandy when we have something in vertex form. And that's why we like vertex form, because once you get a little bit of practice with this, you can just instantly look at an, an equation and you can be able to identify what the vertex is. But sometimes we're going to get equations that are not that obvious. So for instance, like what if I had an equation, let's just do a Y equals, and in this case I have an X squared plus four X, right? So now it's not so obvious what your A and your K are, or your H and your K. So what we need to do now is we need to complete the square. And the process of completing the square is basically taking a, is basically taking a quadratic equation in standard form, AX squared plus BX plus C, and rewriting it into vertex form, which is Y is equal to A times X minus H quantity squared plus K. Okay. So there's a couple other variables we could throw in there, but we'll just keep this as the very basic, but that is our goal. We're trying to go from this to this. 
So how do we do that? Well, the way that we do that is we're going to create a binomial squared because what I want you to recognize is X minus H is a binomial squared. X minus H squared is a binomial squared, right? So to create a binomial squared, we have to create a perfect square trinomial. How do you create a perfect square trinomial? You find the value C that makes a perfect square trinomial. How do you find that value C? Well, all you simply do is you're going to take, to do this, you're going to take C is equal to a B divided by two quantity squared. So let's go and see this in practice here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my middle term, which is my B, divide it by 2, and square it. So 4 divided by 2 is going to be a 2. 2 squared is equal to a 4. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that value to this quadratic. So I'll say Y is equal to an X squared plus a 4X plus 4. All right, now what the main thing, though, you have to do, though, is in addition to, like, adding 4, you just can't randomly add 4 to an equation without subtracting the 4, right? Because we've got to keep these equations balanced. Either add it to both sides or add and subtract it on the same side. Now, what's important about this though, is I now just created a perfect square trinomial, right? So now I have Y is equal to an X. Let's see, this can be factored down into an X plus two quantity squared minus four. And guess what? Now I can quickly identify my vertex. My vertex in this case is going to be a negative two, negative four. See how that practice we did up there? See how that made everything go by so much quicker, right? Now, sometimes we get some quadratics that are actually pretty cool. Because sometimes we have a quadratic that's actually already in that form. Like in this case, I have an x squared minus an 8x plus 16. Right? So sometimes students will start completing the square. But you also want you to think about this. This is already a perfect square trinomial. Right? Because if you take your b, right, negative 8 divided by 2, that's just 4. 4 squared is 16. So what I can do is I can automatically already factor this down. So this one would be a, I can factor this down into an x minus 4 quantity squared. And guess what? That's now in standard form. The vertex in this case is four comma zero, kind of one of those that we, you know, already kind of looked at. But sometimes guys, it does take a little bit of work. So in this example, um, what was it? We had a Y is equal to a X squared uh, minus a two X plus one. All right. So in this case, um, no, sorry, two X plus two. That's a perfect square trinomial. <laughs> I don't want to do another one of those. All right. So this is, um, this is not a perfect square trinomial. So in this case, we got to go back through the process again. So what was that process? You're going to take your middle term, divide it by two, and square it. Negative two divided by two is negative one. Negative one squared is going to be a positive one. Now you're going to take that term and you're going to add it to your first two terms. So you remember up here, I just kind of like added it to the equation, right? Well, now we have an extra number here. So we got to be kind of like careful how we're doing this. So I'm going to use um, some different colors so we can kind of represent this. So y is equal to an x squared minus a 2x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let's do plus 1 minus 1, okay? So we're going to add 1 and subtract 1 like we did before. Now I'm going to group, though, these two. And then don't forget we have a 2 over here, right? There's still that 2 there. So that 2 needs to make sure you get transformed. Make sure you add and subtract, and then we're going to group these um, these first two that you the the first three terms. And why do we want to group those? Because that's going to perform our perfect square trinomial. So y is equal to a x minus a one quantity squared. Negative one plus two is going to be a positive one. Now we have a vertex, guys, of one comma one, and that is the progression of finding the vertex of a quadratic. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.